five minutes are gone after the hour of uh, 10 a.m. Central African time. And uh, it's uh, yet another segment uh, where we are talking all things Greek. Right. And um, I've got a special guest in studio this morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? Very well, thanks to New Wildfire. Not too bad. (laughs) Right. Let me care to introduce uh, who you are to our listeners and uh, what it is that you do. Good. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity. It's, it's, it's quite exciting mm-hmm. because Africa is in a, and the whole of Africa, not only South Africa, is in a very exciting uh, um, era yes. for food security and so on. So, and, and the topic is also part of that. Mm-hmm. Yes, my name is Yaki Westeisen and I represent today um, Basuda. Mm-hmm. It's a company that uh, produces and marketing all over Africa, uh, world-class pastures. Oh, right. Um, and um, why? what's your involvement uh, in uh, the agri-industry? Okay, yes, a little bit wider than that, mm-hmm. because my involvement in, in agriculture is in Africa, Yes. Uh, not only in South Africa, as business and project development mm-hmm. in Africa for irrigation projects and also livestock projects, mm-hmm. uh, because there's always an integrated uh, synergy between different uh, aspects in agriculture. Yeah. And also a consultant and uh, give assistance to farmers and investors that want to invest in mainly Zambia and Zimbabwe. Yeah. So I just recently came back from Zimbabwe and Zambia. Mm-hmm. Very exciting to be there. And I really fell in love with the people there. And then also main thing today is the topic is on, on pastures. Mm-hmm. Uh, as, a, as a game changer in the business. Oh, oh okay. Um, and um, if uh, you are to talk to us about uh, the origins and de- development of um, this uh, product called uh, Zeta Brasuda pastures. Yes, that's right. Yeah, what is it about? Okay, it's very interesting because Africa has a lot to offer to the world. And mm. sometimes other, other companies take advantage of that. Mm. And the, the pastures is also one like one of that. So about 40, uh, actually the, the original pastures originated from Africa and mm-hmm. is, is uh, indigenous to Africa. Yes. So about 45 years ago, a group of uh, farmers from Brazil mm-hmm. came and visited several countries in Africa where they uh, saw certain grass species and so on with very good uh, uh, capabilities and, and um and then they took from the pastures some of the the seed back to to Brazil, okay. where they uh, uh, started to develop and improve the the genetics of the pastures. Mm-hmm. The main focus was to uh, to improve and their own pastures because yeah. they have a very low carrying capacity. Mm-hmm. However, that tropical region is very good and so on, but the, the quality of pastures are very bad, mm-hmm. not palatable, low low uh, quality of uh, crude both protein and so on. Mm-hmm. So they, they discovered this process and they developed it there. And after, okay, the main focus was for themselves, for own consumption. Oh, okay. But <laughs> at this moment, it was, yeah. it was actually after the past, over the past 45 years, it proved to be absolutely the game changer in the, in the, in the meat industry, especially mm-hmm. in their countries, that they, um, they started to export to the whole of, of the world, but yeah. mainly also uh, in Africa. And we as Brasuda uh, is the, uh, the sole distributors of Matsuda pastures that is developed in Brazil. Uh-huh. Oh, okay, right. And uh, when, when, you, when you say that um, it was uh, for their own consumption, yes. um, how so? At, at that stage, their carrying capacity, because that's all what it's all about, is mm-hmm. carrying capacity. Your every hectare must must count, yeah. and in production for your for your livestock. Mm-hmm. And then that good rains, good climate, everything fine, but very bad quality pastures. So okay. Okay. Uh, not not palatable, not uh, um, good uh, nutrition is valuable mm-hmm. uh, value, uh, values and so on. Right. So then they started to improve that and and different strains and different um, mm-hmm. uh, types of products to for the different. Uh, uh, animal range that they have okay. and then through the process they increased their their carrying capacity from where it was originally 45 years ago mm-hmm. 20 hectare yeah. per cattle yes now it is about seven six to eight yeah let us say as an average seven uh, hect- uh cattle per hectare so it is nearly 150 times mm-hmm. uh, improvement on their livestock 
oh, okay. uh, on, on, on their carrying capacity. Because it's also very important to know in any agricultural, any livestock business, mm -hmm. there are four basic pillars that you must look at. Yes. That is the is the success for, for the business. Yeah. And the one is um, genetic composition. Mm -hmm. They have that. They have good quality cattle. Mm -hmm. But then, uh, because genetic composition is very important, even mm -hmm. if you have, um, if I always, uh, I like to say it like that, uh, yeah. is a donkey looks similar like a horse, but it's not a horse. It will never win a horse race yeah. because it does not have the the genetics of a horse. Okay. And then, okay, the, the four pillars are yeah. the one is genetic uh, composition of the animal. Mm -hmm. Then it is feed. Good quality feed is is the key of everything because if you have a poor even if even if you have poor type of animals, you can you can also perform better with good quality feed. Yeah. But exceptionally better when you when you increase the quality of the animal and then the, the second leg is is uh, health control of your animals mm -hmm. and then management of of the rest of, of everything together mm. that is very important to, to look at it that that way okay and uh, when you look at uh, the farmers what what mistakes um that are, are that the farmers make Okay, yeah, that is that is very important. As, uh, um, if you look at the the, the, the farmers, mm -hmm. uh, um, you must you must remember one thing. Yeah, a farmer is um, is is a business. Farming is a business, and sometimes they think they they just take their their best lands and the best arable lands for for mm -hmm. gas crop production. But if you look at livestock, mm -hmm. um, it is so important that you have the right. Um, the, you must you must uh, do the right thing. Yes. It's an number one is an investment, a long term investment. So uh -huh. what you must do, uh, don't necessarily plant only on low poor quality soil yeah. and expect the best. Mm -hmm. So use good quality soil to plant your your uh, products in, mm -hmm. and then also um, to uh, to do your your uh, soil sampling because mm -hmm. it's very important to know because uh, you cannot just guess mm -hmm. because your, your your soil is very important in the process mm -hmm. and uh, that um, so therefore you must you must do soil sampling analysis that you can see yeah. what is the chemicals in the ground in, in the ground and what you must do to to rectify what yeah so and so that that is the other point what i would say the where they you must also remember what you put in is what you get out mm -hmm. so that's an investment in your soil in your land mm -hmm. and that will that will benefit you in the long run okay so do your soil test that sometimes they don't do that they just guess and yes because it is a costly uh, exercise mm -hmm. to just do to add fertilizer and and expensive seed and expensive fertilizer and diesel and with guesswork so to to measure is to know mm -hmm. so do your soil sampling and know what you have in the soil what's the chemicals in the soil and the physical uh, capabilities and then uh, mm -hmm. apply fertilizer or or organic material to that it's very important to do the organic material mm -hmm. and then sometimes they overgraze that is one very big problem in yeah. in the in the industry they want to graze it down to the ground the problem is uh, a plant is a, is like a factory okay. and it uses the leaves to produce by photosynthesis and other processes uh, uh, production okay. so now if you graze it down to the ground mm -hmm. you lose um then then the okay let us start the other way if yeah. you leave some uh um, um, leaves let us say 200 millimeters yeah. then you have 200 millimeters or 250 millimeter, millimeters that can is immediately start producing reproducing for regrowth mm -hmm. but if you graze it to the ground then you you have the problem that the for regrowth the plant must take energy from the from the root system mm -hmm. and then some of the roots will die and then it must for the regrowth it it uh, compensates to uh, to lose some roots and then it mm -hmm. must also regenerate roots again yeah. so it's just common sense to say don't overgraze and so leave a certain amount of um, leaf structure there, mm -hmm. so don't overgraze and also not don't undergraze. If you undergraze and even in certain parts can can grow up to 1.5, 1.8 meters. All so right. then you get a lot of trampling of the animals. Mm -hmm. So there's a golden rule: you start grazing when it's about hip height, and mm -hmm. you graze 
aggressively I talk about our our pastures. Okay. Uh, it's about Hebrew, there's the different that is just a golden, just just a rule of thumb. And then graze it down to about ankle height and remove the aggressive animals, uh, aggressively grazing, and then remove the animals to the, to the next camp and do um, so do a rotational grazing. Oh, okay. And so so you, you you need to make sure that uh, there's always that rotation between uh, uh, your farm. Absolutely. You don't uh, let your animals finish everything to the roots. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Okay. You must you must look after. Remember another. The saying goes also, if you're a livestock farmer, you're actually a pasture manager. That yeah. is where it comes to. So you must manage your pastures and you must manage your cattle. Mm -hmm. You cannot do it from the office. You must be in the field mm -hmm. to see and to know and to know exactly what you must do. So that, right. is, that is common sense. That is not, that is just, let's call it common science. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. Yes. All right. Uh, and uh, in terms of uh, your pasture range, what yes. do you have uh, to offer? Okay. Um, if we look at if we look at the pastures, we have different types of pastures. Yeah. Um, normally, okay. As I said, it originated from Africa, so therefore you have some of the names you will. Yes. Uh, it comes from Africa, like mm. Mombasa, like Aris, like Parada and Tanzania, and that mm. kind of thing. Yes. So uh, we have mainly two. So let us say three different uh, ranges. If we if we look at a panicum maxima, we call it in the old uh, uh, ways. Uh, the old name is white buffalo, mm -hmm. and but remember these are pastures that is improved. It is not. We now have we have in, indigenous in Africa also panicum maximum in the field, but mm -hmm. that is not the improved the improved uh, uh, products. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but in our range in the panicum maximum range, there's about. 12, but the most important one is Mombasa, mm -hmm. and uh, that is de developed for cattle, yes. uh, specifically for cattle, and very good uh, uh, root development. As I said, the whole plant mm -hmm. was developed and improved in, yes. in, in our, so uh, very bit, much better root structure, mm -hmm. uh, better palatability, mm -hmm. digestibility, also regrowth and yield, and that kind of thing. So Mombasa is is one of the pastures developed for cattle mainly. Mm -hmm. And then that was also one of the main game changers in in um, um, in Brazil. Mm -hmm. uh, but then, okay, good protein content is, is very important. Your quality, each, each kilogram must mm -hmm. be high quality to, in your feed flow program. So Mombasa is about 10 to 15% crude protein. Okay. We tested it sometimes at more than 18.5 and so on. Mm -hmm. So that's very important very high uh, aggressive grower mm -hmm. and all of the pastures are obviously also perennial pastures so it's not necessary to replant every year mm -hmm. so that is so, so the one is, is, is Mombasa for for livestock for, for cattle mainly and then Aris is one of also one of our game changers mm -hmm. it is a very high palatability about 75 percent uh, um, um, and also um, the, the um, uh, especially developed for all kind of game uh, uh, like like game like uh, um, small animals like uh, kudus yes kudus browsers and yeah. even uh, grazers ah, okay. and and because of the of the high digestibility of, of over 75 um, percent and very palatable mm -hmm. and also for sheep and and goat especially if, if you look at the agriculture industry specific mm -hmm. areas for sheep and goat it's a lower grower, mm -hmm. very high quality. We also say 10 to 15 percent, uh, 12 to 16. Mm -hmm. If you look at crude protein, what, but we tested it between 11 and 21 percent in certain cases, mm -hmm. because you must also bear in mind the the, the protein content may vary in a plant depending yes. on your management and also your soil and your the feed that you give to the to the plant, yeah. and and also the, the the stage of growth. Okay. And then other one is Paradao. That's also one of our latest um, um, contributions. Mm -hmm. It has about um, uh, about twenty percent more pr uh, production uh, yield on than Mombasa. Mm -hmm. It's also specifically designed for for uh, cattle and also uh, uh, more specific for also a dairy. No, right. But also for young animals, and then Tanzania is another uh, pasture as well. That's just four of the of of the panicum maximum range. Yeah. And then if you look at Brachia Brizanta, we have about four 
uh, that we have uh, is, is, is very good. That is in, for different types of soil, you have different plants. You cannot just use one plant for everything. For everything, okay. Yeah, All right, so, so a farmer needs uh, to understand mm. their soil first. Yeah, soil is very important because mm. uh, it is the medium that the plant in, grows into. Mm. And if you look at some areas, you have play areas, uh, water logging is a problem and, and, and so on. Then we have, a part, we have one of our cultivars, MG5. Mm. That's an advanced cultivar in the um, Brachiara Byzanta range. Mm -hmm. that is actually developed to uh, to to tolerate wet feet mm -hmm. and to tolerate that um, uh, areas and okay. also uh, drought tolerance and uh, cold tolerance is also very important to mm -hmm. look at oh, okay and then another very interesting one is um, uh, in a um, penicetum species we have a cross now the farmers will know the elephant grass and vana grass that that was uh, very popular, but uh, it the problem was it is very expensive to plant because you must use you must use uh, small uh, plants to plant it, okay. and no, it could not be planted by seed. But about five years ago, the company in in Matsuda in Brazil came with a with a breakthrough to uh, to cross the two the banana and the and the, the banana grass and the elephant grass, and you can plant it now with seed. Oh, okay. it's, firstly, it was a very fluffy seed, but now they also scarify it and remove the fluffy and the fluffy stuff, mm -hmm. and then also to to cover it with in a coated uh, uh, process. Okay. So now you can plant that in uh, with seed. That is an absolutely breakthrough mm -hmm. because that's a winner and especially designed for for uh, silage production mm -hmm. and also for for cattle mainly. And because uh, bear in mind that in Brazil, they, the main focus was uh, and is still cattle livestock, okay. as a livestock. But they have certain trends on our um, demand in Africa that they also improved uh, certain species like the aris for, mm -hmm. for uh, uh, sheep and goat and, and game, uh, that kind of thing. But now the, the beauty of the, of the, of the, um, the penicetum, we, the species there is uh, the uh, um, hybrid there is Karayas. Now Karayas, Karayas, uh, Karayas yes. Okay. It is a very exciting uh, um, a plant. Mm -hmm. It can, it's very uh, uh, um, cold tolerant, very high to oak, cold tolerance as well as uh, um, um, drought tolerant. Mm -hmm. And it can grow up to about four meters. And your yield is absolutely amazing that you can get in silage production between 150 and 200 tons in test that we already achieved 200 tons silage per hectare. Mm -hmm. Now that is that is very, very good. Yes. Uh, it's actually excellent. But uh, and then also very high quality. Uh, it's about palatability about 65 to 68 percent. And then uh, after the digestibility, I mean, mm -hmm. and it's also very palatable, but also, as I said, specifically focused on on um, silage production yes. and with a crude protein content of also between 12 and 16 mm -hmm. the highest test that we tested was over 20 percent of about 20 24 percent oh. so that is very exciting right and uh, in terms of um, uh, the future of quality pastures yeah. in the livestock industry. <laughs> okay before i say that i just want to add another one there's yeah. this is several others also in the range yeah but there's another one because in south africa they don't they was not used to the new varieties and new strains. Mm -hmm. So they, it's also good that, uh, and also obvious that they will rely on certain of the, of the pastures that they know. Mm -hmm. And then therefore we developed a, a mixed pasture. We call it for game. It okay. is a mixture between um, uh, roach grass that the people in South Africa know, mm -hmm. and also smutspinger, and, and also our, our aris is, is the other one. And that is absolutely the best in the in the bunch and also mg5 so mm -hmm. now because now they start with that say so right because they know uh, um, smithfinger for example yes. but smithfinger the problem is, is you cannot if you plant it this year you can only use it next year oh, because okay. it's it's a very low germination mm -hmm. uh, um, percentage of about let's say 20 percent and sometimes less mm -hmm. our pastures like if we compare it with with aris as a germination percentage of over, over 80%, it's about 86, 87. Mm -hmm. So that's make, that makes a difference. If you plant it now, you can 
you can start utilizing within six to eight weeks. Mm -hmm. So uh, and, and and so that is that is a difference. Okay. okay. Then then we have also legumes that you can mix with the with the pastures, and then the most important thing of the whole range is yeah. that it is. Uh, um, it is uh, it's not necessary to plant every year because it is perennial. Mm -hmm. And then for different stages, different soil qualities, we have different uh, options. Okay. And we have our, as I, I call it, the game changers. We have certain winners in yeah. the race that is uh, that never lets us down. Okay, so and there's it, always uh, um, um, testing going on and finding yes. out what is best for this region, for yeah. that region. Thank you for that, mm -hmm. because I just recently came back from Brazil yes. uh, a couple of months ago. Uh, a group of our people went to Brazil and to, to also participate and to see what's happening in the research field. Mm -hmm. Now, let me tell you, the people can can do miracles with with genetics and with, with, uh, with the science. Mm -hmm. So, as I said previously, one of the biggest problems that the farmers make uh, is that they overgrazed. Now they developed a new pasture that uh, is very hairy and very unpalatable, if I can call it that way, yes. it, up to about 250 millimeters. So okay. even if you lose, if leave the cattle in or the yes. livestock, they will just graze it to 250, then they will not graze anymore. Right. So the plant um, actually protects itself. Okay. So, so that is uh, to, to, um, to solve one of the of the management problems <laughs> for overgrazing, so that is fantastic. Yeah. And also another cultivar that will be uh, on the market next year. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't want to call the name at the moment, but it can stay in play areas in water like like rice. Okay. So because not a, a very little plants can can survive, survive in, water, yeah. in in water to be submerged in water. Now this one you can plant it in play areas because even if you look at in Zambia. Uh, and that areas, it is like the Kapui River is sometimes flooding for about two, three, four weeks, mm -hmm. and uh, act, thousands of hectares, and then that you can plant there. So that is the so with science they can they 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 change the whole ball game. Mm, very exciting indeed. All right, we also have um, Mr. M on the TV side joining us. Uh, Mr. M, uh, good morning. Uh, good morning. Uh, how are you? <coughs> No, we, we, we're doing good. We're doing good. Um, and uh, I, I mean, um, I'm learning so much I uh, hear from uh, Yaki. Um, and uh, obviously, Yaki, um, the, the, the future quality of uh, the pastures uh, in the livestock industry, yeah. I think that's say, the other point that we need to, uh, to, 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 to talk about. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's, that's very important because if you look at the future of pastures, it's so important mm -hmm. because every farmer must utilize his land to the maximum. Mm -hmm. And so to expand is not necessarily to buy more land, mm -hmm. use the land and utilize the land yes. with the right uh, uh, pastures and, and the right cultivars to, to optimize your existing land. Mm -hmm. So that can make a huge difference because if you can increase your carrying capacity from, uh, let us say, mm -hmm. um, six hectares or eight hectares per, per cattle, and then now you can increase it to about two cattle per hectare or four cattle per hectare, that is huge. Mm -hmm. So that is the one thing to optimize your available land because land is very expensive. Mm -hmm. And and um, we have just so much land. So use your, optimize your land, that's one thing. And then um, a, a, that contributes also to a proper feed program because what the people are doing in summertime, there's a lot of grazing and sun, but they don't focus on the on the on the difficult months in winter time and so mm -hmm. so it's very important to have a proper feed flow program right through the year mm -hmm. and here you sit with a good quality passes that you can uh, bail and you can uh, or do silage mm -hmm. and you can use it as standing high that you still have a very good quality because also to to focus on the type of animal that you that you farm with yes uh, because for for an example and a pregnant female, let us say a pregnant uh, goat or, or, a, or a sheep mm -hmm. that is a very uh, often gives uh, triplets and, and, uh, and twins and so on. Mm -hmm. It's very important to remember that in the gestation period of about five months, the last two, three months is very is a challenging for the for the animal for the for the pregnant female, female yeah. because the, the, the capacity of the of the um, of the 
that she can consume mm -hmm. in 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 her um, um, in her rumen is much smaller because the space that uh, that the fetuses take up uh, reduces the 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 um, let's say the the the, the the amount of feed that she can in she can intake, intake yes okay. so therefore in that stage you if she will she will stop and also the the the, the unborn uh, calves. calves or let us say mm. uh, kids will stop because there's no space and not enough the nutrition mm. therefore in that case if you if we use like aris where you have a uh, very high uh, quality per kilogram so mm. even if she just um, consumes two cages, it is two cages of very high quality. So that is important to bear in mind. Different types of animals have different uh, feeding uh, um, uh, needs. Patterns, needs, right, needs yes. okay. yeah. All right, uh, excellent. So, um, uh, Mr. M, uh, any contributions or uh, questions that yeah. uh, you would like? Mr. Ustazen, uh, if you look at Africa, I think you've already indicated that it occupies 60% of the land mass of the world. And Africa has a lot of potential. So imagine it is midnight and you look up the African skies and you were asked to identify 10 people who stand out in the area of uh, beef production for profit, not subsistence farming, who would they be to you? Who would stand out? Or, you, you mean the places, the countries or what? The individuals like you, like uh, you remember before the show, you were being called an Africana. <laughs> yes, we have a very interesting uh, conversation with the other gentlemen and you. <laughs> that, that's right. So somebody will group you. So we are looking at men and women in Africa who stand out. If I'm in Uganda, I want to be able to know who I should look up in the area of beef production. The value chain in, in beef production. Do you think that database exists in Africa where we can identify these people? Okay, yes. Thank you for this one. It's a little bit hard here. Uh, this is, yeah, thank you for this one. Yes, it is an interesting question. I Let me take it from another angle. Uh, as we said in the previous discussion with the other gentlemen, we are all uh, have a role to play and a contribution to make to food security internationally. As I said, in in Africa, the solution lies in Africa due to, in, in my opinion, because about 64% of available arable land uh, is in Africa that can make a, a difference in food security. So therefore, um, the solution lies in Africa. And the countries, there are 54 countries in Africa. Uh, that everybody has a role to play. And now let us boil it down to where we must start, our roots. Our roots are, we're all children from God. Even if you're black or white or what color or what background, doesn't matter. We have all, we have all parts of God's big puzzle and we have a contribution to make. Not everybody are farmers because others are in cities and so on. So the farmers that has the the privilege to be on a farm, even a small scale farmer or commercial farmer has a contribution to make. And then as like Brasuda, for example, and I can mention a couple of other names as well, it's so important also to play our role in the bigger picture so that we can, and I, and I saw that all over Africa, uh, uh, my wife and I traveled in business about, in, about eight to 10 countries in Africa and we see the same all over. The people are, most of the people are on survival mode that they, because of they lack, sometimes they want to do, they want to, but they don't know how to. So therefore we all have a, a role to play, even from government, from institutions like Brasuda, like uh, Agrico. I'm also with the irrigation company involved with Agrico. 
and with the people as we go around in, in the whole bigger area. So we all have a role to play and contribute. In, my, my, not everybody question, knows. My, my, my question is, uh, imagine you are in a village and you are the first doctor in that village. How inspiring do you think that would be for other people growing up? Uh, yes, okay. I see you want to take it from the village side. Yes, uh, the villages, um, most of the people in Africa um, is reliant on agriculture in a small scale. And they no, must. No. I, I, I'm asking about inspiration that uh, okay. if you have one person in your village who has done well, do you think that inspires others to do the same? Absolutely, absolutely, yes. Because, as I said, sometimes they want to, but they don't know how to. If you have somebody that can improve their, 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 their basics and then to work together with them and to show them, as I said, sometimes they want to, but they don't know how to, if we can assist them like pastures. In, in, they, in summertime, they have good grazing, but in, in wintertime, the same, the same uh, livestock is starving. So if they can be assisted, to, and show them the way to, to have a constant feed flow program, feed flow program right through the year. That will immediately change the, the whole situation. And also- you, in, know, you know a person called Henny? Henny, yes, I can know, Henny van der Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, what does ADC stand for? Uh, Agricultural Development Corporation. And uh, were it not for Henny, would we be on this platform? No. Therefore, that's why, because he did his part. And, and I know Henny very well. We went together to several other places, also to Angola. And uh, that is what I mean. Everybody must have a, make a contribution. And, but now also, uh, the people on the ground, the masses where they have only maybe five cattle or whatever. They're also producers, they're also providers. They must not, they must, we must bring their dignity back by improving. I'm, I'm just trying to look in terms of organization. Mm. Today we know you because of Yeni. Uh, we know ADC, we now know Brasuda. And uh, do you agree that we need to build our own community? one individual at a time. Absolutely, yes. We must, we, have, we must have a platform. That is what also ADC is about, uh, that um, to create a platform where people can contribute uh, to the bigger picture, because not, not only so, one can solve the solution, we have different, uh, different um, um, aspects that we can uh, contribute to the, to the platform. Okay, so if somebody asked you what is 1873, do you, do you know what that means? Yes, that is this program. It's the first time that, I, that I'm on this program and I'm very, I feel myself privileged to be here because that is also a way to get the, the message to the, to the people and to see also to identify other other role players and also people in need that need this type of of uh, solution in their in their uh, environment because if one person has a, a a problem or a challenge in in one area then there are hundreds of others with a similar problem so this this program of yours i must salute you this is a perfect program because it brings people and technology and ideas together to brainstorm and to come up with a solution because it is each and everyone's uh, um, uh, it gives an opportunity for everybody and also that is uh, to contribute to the bigger uh, um, let us call it uh, um, uh, challenge or our enemy is poverty and we must do we must make it together to fight the poverty enemy over okay. the border. That's a, and you know, 1873 
uh, it stands for, uh, if we look, one plus eight, it's uh, nine. Yes. Seven plus three is a ten. Yes. And what is the difference between the two numbers? It's only one. One. So the power of one yes. is what we celebrate. <laughs> Absolutely. And, uh, we celebrate thinking out of boxes. Absolutely. We celebrate a borderless mind. Mm. Absolutely, I so agree with you. I if, also uh, if uh, you got 20 friends in Africa, imagine next week we plan to all introduce each other mm. in 15 minutes. Each of our friends must be on Zoom, like you are now. I think you were afraid of being on Zoom. That's why you came to the studio. <laughs> no, I was traveling. I came, I came back very late last night. So I was traveling and then I decided it's better to, to come to the office. And I want yeah. to see you in person and I want to introduce you. I, I'm, a, I'm a people's man. I want to see you and shake your hand and sue you. No, that's, that's important. But next week, you don't have to come back again. Like we are next to each other but we were on the same platform, but not in the same room. Yeah, absolutely, that makes a huge difference, yes. So, we so can the also... person could be in Uganda, be in Zimbabwe, mm -hmm. could be in Tanzania, could be in Angola, Ghana. And if we are all interested in the agricultural value chain, then we can be in one address. That is the name of the radio station. I, I learned a lot now. In an age where we can all be one. Yes. And we can be in one platform. Mm. And if we are in one platform, then we can ask the question, why are we poor when we are so blessed? That is a question that we all must answer, but it, it, the solution lies in our own hands. To take, to, to cross borders, to cross um, uh, um, uh, all kind of borders, that like, like race, like uh, country, and take hands together and contribute to the bigger, as I said, our, uh, our um, biggest uh, enemy is poverty, and we must do it together. And that is the only way that everybody must contribute. And this platform is absolutely the right, the, the right place to be, to, to let so the people know what's ne ne Next week, are you? No, no, next week, uh, sorry. No, next week, are you willing to uh, be part of this town hall meeting where you bring we can accommodate up to 100 people on mm. one address. So our challenge to you, mm. can you be the reason why we come together? Yes, yes, I'm, I'm willing to be part of that because that is the only way that we will make a difference is to contribute and, and keep on doing a contribution. And so so next week, uh, uh, Walfa, we got Mr. Usterhezen. We'll call it Friends of Usterhezen in Agriculture. Sure. Mm -hmm. No, that's, uh, that, that's an exciting one, eh? Absolutely. <laughs> that's a big F -O -O, Friends of, instead of Jackie, or maybe we'll call it F-O-J. Friends of uh, Yaki. <laughs> okay, absolutely. I'm, <laughs> I'm honored. <laughs> so we want to talk about how best do we remove barriers in Africa? How best do we use technology? Yes. Come together. Absolutely. Yes, and you're right. How best you're right, do we optimize, do we become the change that we want to see by just breaking the barriers 
and getting to know who is who in the zoo yeah. of yes. Africa. And I want, I want to add on that one. Um, uh, we are not politicians, we are farmers. We all want to contribute. The politicians are very important, but they have their own role. We want, you see my, my sleeves are already rolled up. We must roll, roll up our sleeves and do the job. And to, uh, sometimes it's good to have uh, conversations and good to have long meetings, but then after the meetings, we must be doers. We must do something about it cross the barriers as we did already uh, and keep on going and take hands and contribute to the bigger picture to the benefit of everybody. In for, uh, one for all and all for one. So do you agree that without talking, there is no sharing? Absolutely. We must talk. We must have this type of conversation. We must uh, um, share ideas. We must brainstorm together, but then we must move out and do it. Uh, that is yeah. important. That's right. So to next week, we want to have one hour with FOJ. It will be called FOJ. Sure. Friends of the Jackie or Yaki? Just yeah. as you like, yucky or jucky, just as you like. <laughs> it's the same person. All right. <laughs> so if I'm English, I'll call you Jackie. <laughs> if I'm African, I'll call you Boki, <laughs> Yaki. <laughs> Africa, the people are suffering with the worst days, and so it is yucky or jucky, it's better. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So next week, we'll plan it so that we can bring uh, African minds together. And we can also demonstrate that we don't have to travel to talk to each other. We can bring Africa in one room. Absolutely. Amen on that one. Amen on so, that one. It might be blessed. Okay. So we also have an initiative called Banking on Africa's Future, which is when we have contacts, we are saying, let's build a community. And the community is like a bank. And you can go to the website called bankingonafrica.com. And on that website, uh, I'm not sure whether you can share the, the screen on that side. Uh, the screen, you can share it on your side you are hosting. Oh, it's me who is hosting. Yes. Okay. So you can see it from that side. Uh, no, uh, you you are the one who has to open it and share. Okay. So let me let me share so that uh, uh, seeing is believing. So, but we are more superstitious. That's <laughs> Yes, I will visit you in your office just now. <laughs> That's why they call it, they call us African. We can be superstitious. Uh, no, I think I, I I'm I'm able to share. Uh, yes, I'm I'm able to share that screen. No, yeah, I, okay, I'm, I've already shared you. Yeah. It's, it's, it's proving to be difficult on my side. So maybe let you can share that. Yeah, let me share on my side. Okay. Are you, are you seeing it? Uh, yes, yes, we can see that. So, Yaki, that's the, uh, the website. Can you see? Yes, yes, I can see. Thank you, sir. I can see it. And uh, yes, that is the way to go. Yeah. So on that website, you see on the on the right, it said submit new listing. And we are calling you a list. So if you, you very much. I'm I'm pleased to and honored to 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 be part of that. And uh, yes, let us let us do everybody. So let us you, do. Our if you click there, you go to this page. 
where you are required to provide your personal information. And then at the bottom of it, you then, you then apply. You click apply. And uh, after that, you also tell your friends to tell their friends so that we can build a community together. Once you have done that, you then join the individual list. And it will be like this. You have actuarial consulting, agriculture with nine people so far. The idea is to increase the number of people. This is a new project, and we are saying, let's work together with ADC, Brasuda, so that we build from 139. By end of next week, we must have 500. By end of the following week, we must have 1,000. And if we, instead of having nine in agriculture, we must also split it into different forms of agriculture. Because agriculture is the mother, but it is a lot of people who are involved in it. And when we look at a farmer, we may discover that actually is just another human being trying to do the best they can. But nobody is a farmer. A grower is not a farmer. Pesticides are not farmers. Tillage is not farming. Water is not farming, but they are all part of the ecosystem. So we need to have a marketplace of ideas, a marketplace of people. Then if you are a co company like Brasuda, you then click where it says corporate. Then you can create your own listing there. You click create listing, and then it will then tell you what discipline you are in, then you add there. If it's agriculture, then you fill that in and also the logo of your company so that people can see you there. So if you click there again, you want to check who already is in. So if we are looking at uh, uh, farmers, we can click on the farmers. We have DICLA training, which is on the training side. See their logo, their address, and the business category, farmers, and your farmer's choice, again, you have Yazi or Kukeshle farming. So all that agri trading. So we then come and also find you there. <clears throat> yes, that is brilliant. That's brilliant, sir. That is what must happen. And then also I fully agree with you with the farming. It's not everybody are farmers, but uh, a farmer is the person that can work in synergy with nature without uh, destroying nature but to produce from nature uh, and to to in that is that is a huge uh, responsibility because even the soil soil is not just a dead is something it is a living organism and so the whole ecosystem and to to do it in synergy with that to benefit the the soil the earth the climate uh, because we we saw the it is irresponsible actions of of the mankind that also has the uh, the problem of of uh, climate change now on our hands. So that is part of that. That is that is a, um, a very important uh, responsibility to farm the right way. Okay. So uh, as as I said, we believe in the power of one. We don't believe in a farmer. We believe in the individual. The individual could be a grower. 
could be an agronom agronomist, could be anything but a human being. So if we believe that, we believe that farming is a passion. You may decide to be the best grower, but farming as an enterprise is an ecosystem. You convert cash into materials and labor, then you convert the harvest into cash. And that's why we call it cash flow. It must flow. Absolutely, sir. So I there is no farmer mm. in our 1873 idea, but we have a human being who is and can decide to be whatever they choose to be in the value chain. So we want to create a platform we have the demand side, the supply side that converts a seed into a crop, converts a sperm into a bull. And in between, there's a lot of work to be done, not by one person, by many of us. So we yes, want to absolutely. working together than working alone as a farmer. Absolutely, yes. The, the, yes, I agree with you. That is very important that we must stand together. We have all different contributions that we can make to the same uh, goal. It is like it is like a, a soccer match. We have different players in different positions, but in the end, we want to win the game. And here is the same, even over borders, borders, country borders, uh, um, any type of borders. We have the same the same uh, enemy, as I said, and that is poverty. And and we must create food for food security, and we can do it only together, everybody has, has a contribution to make to the bigger picture. So, thank you very much. Together we can do more. On that one, amen <laughs> on that one. Yes, thank you. All right, uh, thank you so much, Yaki. Mr. M, thank you so much. Um, okay. And uh, to our listeners and viewers, uh, thank you. Enjoy the rest of uh, the programming. We're back next week uh, with uh, FOJ. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. That's a privilege. <laughs> All right. Uh, thank, thank you. And uh, it's uh, the 1873 FM on a Friday. Good morning. <laughs> I'm 